scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Man was given an advantage of duality of realms. That means I can be in this realm physically, but then I can outsource intelligence from another dimension. This is very powerful. Very, very powerful. That all that you see is not all that there is. Medically speaking, when an individual is diagnosed with a situation, please look up. We try using medical tools and if that man is limited as far as the limitation of medicine is concerned, we conclude that there is no solution for that man. But the Bible lets us know that the physical realm is not the only realm where we can draw strength. There is another dimension, my goodness, that you can outsource spiritual power from another realm and administer it physically and the results will show physically. Now watch this. If my body begins to swell, for instance, the question is, you are not surprised that my body is swelling because that is a supernatural occurrence too. I was not born that way. I was not surgically manipulated to begin to swell. But when the body goes down supernaturally, it now becomes a problem. You see the mind of men. Are we together now? Yes. If I suddenly begin to develop a growth that I was not born with, nobody begins to ask where does that growth derive its strength from because it's not growing at the rate of other cells in the body that means another kind of life is empowering it we can give it all kinds of medical explanations but the truth is that if it was being empowered by the same energy it will grow at the same rate with other cells the fact that the growth accelerated to destroy you it already tells you there is another kind of life empower it but if that growth should shrink or disappear now there is a problem where did it go to the question is where did it come from are we together the supernatural very very powerful until believers come to a point where they understand and appreciate the supernatural beyond being a pentecostal phenomenon beyond a phenomenon just for charismatics we may never walk in certain levels of authority power and victory for many people they think the supernatural is just an option for those who are called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry so if you feel you are not called into ministry you just feel let me remain at the level of principles and logic and human wisdom the supernatural is not for men of god the supernatural is not for charismatics and pentecostals the supernatural is not for preachers the supernatural is a system of advantage provided for man so that we can walk experientially in victory jesus looks at nathaniel and says i saw you that means this is not the only eyes i have while you were under the tree i saw you in fact he scanned him and said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile 
and Nathaniel said, ah, this is surprising. You are here. And he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this tip of the iceberg, you are already surprised. You will even see yourself greater things than this. More than what you are seeing, you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. When you go to bed, isn't it amazing that while your body is lying down there, that same body is somewhere in the name of a mystery that you call a dream you are there with your body you are interacting with intelligence participating and you bring back information and yet your body is lying down there there are people who for you know science right now has been exploring deeper and deeper into this this mysterious realm of the supernatural in fact i watched a documentary i think a few months ago where they tried to develop a machine that can record dreams yes and i think they've, they've made some advances in it so the the machine is connected to an individual whilst he's sleeping and it begins to give a pictorial representation of the dream that person is having The realm of the spirit when jesus walked upon the earth he demonstrated the reality and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit jesus for instance when the young lad brought five loaves and two fish he looked at them and he taught them a lesson that all you have in your hands is not all there is if you can tap into this realm many things can happen to what you already have listen this is very powerful because when you are aware of the fact that you are not limited just by this realm there is an advantage that you have the duality of realms are we blessed right from childhood i've been very intrigued about issues of the supernatural magic and all of these things even before i had an intentional encounter with the lord jesus christ it bothered me how people could manipulate laws and sometimes you would watch these people in shows bring out doves from their pockets is that true some of them and then now fortunately god planted me to come from africa hello africa we saw traditional festivals where people would put fire through their mouth and bring it out laughing cut themselves with knife with no injuries whatsoever these people fraternized with spirits who introduced them to certain spiritual laws that exposed them to the realm of the spirit and on the strength of that view they could command signs supposedly and wonders on earth the holy spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the supernatural the holy spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the realm of the supernatural in fact any spirit at all including demonic spirits can usher men into certain dimensions of the supernatural the holy spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the supernatural in a way that edifies them and glorifies jesus the holy spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the realm of the supernatural in a way and a manner that edifies the people and glorifies them every other spirit that exposes a man to the realm of the spirit will always leave a side effect in that man are we together now but the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can expose men to the supernatural for instance when moses came from his encounter with the god of the hebrews the bible says he went to pharaoh and said pharaoh thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go and he drew his rod the bible says the rod of moses became a serpent and you would think pharaoh would look and say wow impressive how did you make this happen pharaoh was not moved at all he called janus and jembes the magicians of egypt 
cast your rod also and they casted their rods it became the exact same thing by what spirit then did their rod become a serpent hallelujah that is why i must balance this very quickly that in your desperation to know more of god in your desperation to open up yourself to the realm of the spirit you must be sure that the word of god and the spirit of god become your principal guides because they are not the only guides available your passion and your desperation can connect you to other guides and other spirits that are not of god they will usher you to the realm of the spirit and you will bring back error you will bring back destruction they will aberrate your spiritual progress many people have gone to fast and pray wanting power wanting to be open to the prophetic and from the sincerity of their desperation because they did not honor the word of god and the spirit of god as the principal tools for exposing a man to the realm of the spirit in a way that edifies that individual and brings glory to god many of them had all kinds of interactions with pseudo jesus's they had all kinds of interactions with spirits of the dead they had all kinds of interactions with the inter intergalactic realm and they brought back messages strategies formulas that are now destroying the body of christ can i tell you i searched i think a few days ago to find out how many religions in the are in the world let me give you that for free there are over four thousand religions in the world how many and counting 4,000 registered religions in the world and counting every one of those 4,000 religions came from an encounter and I can tell you if there was no one following them they would not have the audacity to even register it every one of them has a proposition that is directed to the realm of the spirit the Holy Spirit is not the only guide and usher to give you spiritual experiences you have to understand this because we are a people of prayer and right now um spiritual activities like prayer and fasting and so on and so forth are really being emphasized in the body of christ now people are having a heightened awareness of the value of these spiritual experiences but we need to be careful because satan also wants that kind of condition the moment your hunger and your desperation rises to its zenith and you are not conscious of the holy spirit and the word of god eventually you will arrive the realm of the spirit and you'll be escorted by strange and familiar spirits into error that will make for doom and destruction a few years ago in zaria i think i've shared this story somewhere i finished a meeting and then just to see a few people to counsel them and then i'm seeing these three or four gentlemen and one of them had this beautiful priestly regalia and i was wondering wow what a gentleman this guy really wants to be a nazarene i thought it was just his passion to be like jesus only for me to find out that that gentleman believed he was jesus not like jesus not in the image of jesus jesus they came from Kano. And the other gentleman who was with him was, I, I, I think, was it Judas now or John? One of these guys. No, 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 no. I'm not joking. I really mean what I'm saying. They really believed it. And for some reason, they believed that like Jesus received that impartation from John, they left Cano and they came to me for that, that semblance of the baptism. I was watching with shock. Now, I've seen all kinds of things in ministry, believe me. I've seen all kinds of things, but this one was unique and strange and interesting. That a human being can actually come to that point. Do you know, when I researched, those guys started as a prayer group. They didn't start as people who were bad people. They were sincere gentlemen who felt like they wanted to press into spiritual things welcome to the realm of the spirit unassisted by the holy ghost and you find out that another spirit will drive you into all kinds of things and will ship back doctrines of demons will ship back all kinds of things that destroy people people have written books out of false encounters 
people have deceived now the body of christ is practically confused we do not even know many believers don't know whether they are saved or not again because of the many extra biblical encounters that have come and it does not mean that the people who had these encounters were necessarily bad they have not been taught the protocol of accessing the supernatural there are all kinds of combinations of trado african religion together with spiritism and then you find scriptures in psalms to back it up and that becomes a terrible combination like a bad cook and you create something that destroys people there is a reason why i'm teaching you on the supernatural this morning number one because it is god's desire that we access these realms if we must walk in victory we cannot shy away from the reality of this realm but number two to provide for us a road map by the spirit so that we do not delve into all kinds of error and superstition that would destroy us and destroy our lives let me finish my story i honestly cannot even remember how i finished with those gentlemen because i think that guy was determined to remain jesus I, I think I remember trying to propose and advise him and to let him know that our dominion in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. It is shared dominion. The life of God that we have was not derived from us. It came from Jesus to us by connection. And yet they would not believe. I know a gentleman many years ago again who really began praying and pressing into spiritual things until he eventually became it was a mental condition i think it resulted to something like bipolar that gentleman was in the hospital for a very long time in fact he stayed in my house i brought him then at that time to stay in my house for a day or two hoping that the presence of god in that house will help rehabilitate whatever was happening to him and I woke up in the night and I saw the gentleman carrying a handkerchief looking for my mirrors. I said, you are leaving the next day. By the morning, you are out of my house. I've made my spiritual contribution. God knows I love you. Are we together? Many people have routed the realm of the spirit in unauthorized ways i hope you know that there are many ways to enter a house for instance you can tear the roof and come in you are in the house but you are in the house illegally you can jump through the fence you can squeeze through the window but the authorized way to enter the house is through the door jesus and jesus alone said i am that means i am the authorized access the way the door you can follow through any other route if you enter my house through my window you are in my house but you are not welcome are we together this is not to plant fear in you we are discussing the subject of encounters and we have to be careful the supernatural is a realm that is available for all. The supernatural is a realm that we should all get to. That means you should get to a point in your life where you can manifest the gifts of the spirit. You should get to a point in your life where your eyes are open to encounter and have visionary experiences. All of these systems of advantage, as I call them, they are important for the excelling of the believer. But if you are not guided, the devil will deceive us and manipulate our sincere desire into realms and encounters and activities that will destroy us hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the supernatural is an interplay between the word of god and the spirit of god let me talk for a minute or two about the word of god please look up when you are dealing with the subject of the supernatural there is something about god you have to know and understand that the boundary of God's commitment to the believer is his word. The word of God represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions that the word allows. 
you have to understand this he has limited his interaction with man to the provisions that scripture allows that means if you cannot find the basis for that interaction from scripture god is not committed to it are we together now this is this is a rule of thumb that you have to understand in your desire to explore the realm of the spirit that the boundary of god's commitment to man is his word that means there is nothing god will ever do with man do for man do to man that will be outside the provisions that his word allows in fact the bible says that he has exalted his word above his reputation so there is no other way an individual will be saved in this kingdom because according to scripture the formula for administering salvation is that with your heart you believe unto righteousness is that true and that with your mouth confession is made unto salvation so if anyone ever tells you he or she was saved you have a right to ask them how did you get saved verify the formula if it's not consistent with scripture no matter what kind of peace he has he's not saved based on scripture our confidence must come or be derived from the provisions that the scripture allows the bible says in obtaining promises if it is god's way there are two things that must be added to your equation faith and patience it says to follow them who through faith and patience if you ever meet a man who obtained a promise in the kingdom and you do not find the application of faith and you do not find patience he says run away even if there is a promise he's holding so there is faith and patience are we together now when you understand the administration of the word of god then it is going to be difficult for you to delve into error I give you an instance if God opens my eyes right now and say I see a dear sister here and I see a spirit standing behind her or I see a grave now I'm interpreting how spiritual things happen now I'm seeing all these kinds of things because the way the realm of the spirit works is very different from the way this realm works the concept of time and distance in the realm of the spirit is not exactly the way it works here in one minute i can see something that would take me 10 minutes to interpret are we together now yes the 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 capacity to assimilate is higher in the realm of the spirit than this realm we can be praying right now and i can say in jesus name and i'll be sharing something that i just saw and it will take over five ten minutes the realm of the spirit is by far superior to this realm when the hand wrote on the wall in the days of daniel it was only four words from the physical realm mene mene tekel ufesen but mene alone meant oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting <laughs> so imagine what happens when you pray in tongues that 10 minutes of praying in tongues you are not just saying ba 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 your mind thinks that's what you are saying but in the realm of the spirit you are stretching and you are creating realities and interacting with the realm of the spirit are we blessed now i hope someone is learning something so back to my vision i'm seeing this lady for instance and i'm seeing a grave and i'm seeing destruction now I can interpret everything based on what I saw. And I say, young lady, stand up. And then I will tell her that I just saw a grave. I just saw a spirit behind you. And I can leave that lady in that state and destroy her faith, dampen her confidence about God, and allow the devil to now take advantage of her imagination and manifest what i saw or i can interpret what i have seen from the lens of scripture now i have seen the grave the grave has never been except for the situation of jesus the grave has never really been a place of advantage it's a representation of death and doom and destruction 
is that true so when i see a grave and i see a spirit i must be able to pass my vision through the lens of scripture to profit that lady the interpretation must be constructed in a way and a manner that regardless what i saw victory is what she must hear are you getting what i'm saying now my seeing may be correct but because i do not know that the word of god is more superior listen the dominion of the word of god is not only in this physical realm even if you take the word of god to the realm of the spirit every spirit will submit to it also if god the spirit submits to the word of god there is no other spirit that stands higher than the word of god the word of god still commands authority and dominion even in the realm of the spirit are we together yes so if i see you dead in the realm of the spirit i'm not just going to stand and say i see you dead there are many scriptures that will support my interpretation number one i will discern your level of maturity are you matured enough for me to give you that vision without it affecting your confidence if i discern you are immature i will leave it and pray about it i will just minister life to you and not have to tell you the vision because receiving that vision when you are not grounded even if i pray for you the the level of, of the low level of transformation will still make you a victim of what i've said is god teaching someone something this morning There have been many times when I'm about to take a trip and then I get text messages from people and many genuine, sincere people, some of them prophets, and they say, Apostle, you're about to take a trip. And I say, that's exactly true. Say, be careful. Please don't go. I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. And they're not lying. That was what Satan planned that morning when I woke up. But I have to get there because i'm aware that satan does not have any special occasion to kill me the bible already gives me an information that any day and any time he finds a chance he is an enemy there is no rest as far as that agenda is concerned so that news of, of tragedy based on my transformation is not news i have always known he does not like me there's nothing new about it now listen i do not dishonor the vision that that man saw but then my confidence is based on the fact that i have the principles of scripture that can veto that spiritual activity and i go on my journey and return back safely just on hearing that vision at least three scriptures come as weapons one i shall not die but live and declare you don't just make bold face for nothing there has to be a scriptural basis number two honor your father and your mother in the lord go and ask my parents go and ask every spiritual leader in this nation whether i have dishonored them so what becomes the basis where is the hedge broken that the serpent will strike and then number three i said before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life That becomes the basis of my confidence. If all I say is, God forbid, I wouldn't die. You would die like you, you cannot imagine. It has to be the scripture. That the scripture has authority even in the realm of the spirit. I don't need to know what spirit was assigned. I just need to know that every spirit must submit to scripture. I pray you understand what I'm teaching this morning. Let me teach you within the few minutes we have left how to correctly access the supernatural. We'll have some time this evening to pray for the sick and to minister. So do well to invite as many people who are trusting the Lord who have some time to minister. I think you should clap with your pastor too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. It will be, it will be a time of activations there are many of us who the lord sent you to this conference to come and to receive not just to be enlightened but to encounter graces graces that will lift you and open up new doors and new dimensions for you
if you're with me say amen. amen there are many of you that tonight age-long captivities that have refused to bow to the name and the lordship of the christ by the administration of his power through his word in the name of jesus will ward off these arsenals of darkness against your life there are four keys that can help you manifest the supernatural by manifesting the supernatural i don't just mean visionary experiences but walking practically in the supernatural you want your life to command signs and wonders you want your life to be a manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom beyond the physical realm here are the keys number one the first thing you need is knowledge you need knowledge of the principles of scripture you need to know the word of god knowledge of the principles of scripture that means if you truly do not know the word if you do not contend for enlightenment through the word you may never be able to manifest the supernatural in a way that profits you glorifies jesus and becomes a blessing to all who are connected to you the word of god the formula remains the same in the beginning god john 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things how many things does that include your finances your lifting your tomorrow your exaltation your restoration all things were made by him and without him that means outside of the influence of the word of god was not anything made that was made you must pay attention to scriptures i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified this is the bible colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 it says that the word of christ should dwell in you richly in all wisdom in all wisdom in all wisdom in all wisdom not some wisdom let the word of christ dwell in you richly 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 you must allow the word of god to find expression within your spirit you must become an addict of the word of god if you truly want to walk in the supernatural before you start engaging in spiritual exercises make sure you have the fortification of the word fasting for days praying for days without a foundation of the word will only expose you to the realm of the spirit but then it will expose you to familiar spirits you must have that foundation of the word we are born of the word we live by the word we reign by the word say amen, amen. you must have knowledge I submit to you that there is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of Christ. Spiritual ignorance. I respectfully admit, and now I'm teaching apostolically, not just to house on the rock, but generally within the body of Christ, the truth is that there is a lot of Bible study. There is a lot of scripture recitation, but there is very little access to superior knowledge spiritual knowledge we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the high level illumination that we have you must contend for light john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not you must become a student of scripture not for the purpose of preaching not for the purpose of having something to say but for your personal spiritual growth you are mature to the degree to which the word of christ abides in you john 15 the first eight, eight verses when you read from verse 1 down to verse 8 it talks of the abiding power of the word if you abide in me and my word abides in you that you will ask whatever you will and it will be given to you 
you have to abide I believe the Word of God I study the Word of God I love the Word of God it is my meditation all day long it has constructed my understanding are we together one advantage of the word of god is that it constructs your viewpoint you are able to interpret life from the lens of scripture make the word of god a priority in your life and you have set yourself on a course for supernatural living i guarantee you on this the bible contains the wisest perspective on all matters the bible scripture contains the wisest perspective on all matters now in truth i will tell you you will find a lot of theological debates as to um the fact that there may be other books of the bible and it's not only 66 books i agree i agree based on theology but the bible lets us know that this that has been canonized is sufficient to communicate the whole counsel of God as far as the excelling of the believer is concerned there is nothing that you will ever encounter in your life that does not have a solution based on scripture so the information here is sufficient enough it says many miracles Jesus did which are not recorded in this book so it tells you there are others that are not recorded he said but this has been recorded that you will believe and that in believing you will find life the truths here are sufficient to administer life and victory as far as the course of your lifetime is concerned are we blessed knowledge the knowledge of scripture and let me tell you this the seed for the harvest of knowledge is to be able to set yourself to give yourself to study and to give yourself to learning the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth preachers we must study believers we must study i am in a hurry would destroy our lives i am in a hurry would destroy our lives they are life to those who find them they are more than information to those who find them they are life the bible is not a lecture manual it contains the character of god it is a revelation of god's ways his modus operandi when you understand scripture you are enlightened dominion the word exousia that is translated authority it means delegated power that is based on light the power to stand and represent another based on that information that that one had that means if i send someone to stand for me i would not just say delegate for me until i tell him what i know are we together now that sharing together so you come to a point of illumination hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you